The content of this video is for educational purposes only. What you do with this information is at your own risk. Thank you for watching. Enjoy. How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be addressing an issue with RetroPy after you do a fresh install. So let's go ahead and check it out. Okay, so I've been getting several comments on my video about the setup guide for RetroPie. And in these comments, I'm being told that when trying to install RetroPie following my setup guide, that eventually I show my ROMs folder that looks like this. And I already have all the core folders pre-installed after my installation. So people trying to install RetroPie right now following my setup guide are instead seeing the ROMs folder that looks like this, which only has two um, core folders pre-installed. Now I'm not sure why this is happening. Maybe an update with the script has been left out. Something went wrong or I don't know why, but it's not installing the cores automatically like it did in my previous video. And instead to address this issue here, we're going to have to do the long route and install the cores ourselves. So it could be a good thing because those that want just the specific core and not take up any extra space or time, then they can just uh, install that specific core. There's also a feature to install all of the cores at once. Some will fail, but the ones that we that work on the switch will be installed. And I'll be showing both of these options as we go along with this video. But before I do that, I would like to quickly disclose that installing these cores does take a long time. I'm not sure if it depends on the type of SD card you have and internet connection, which those two might become a factor, but it does take a long time. Uh, I'm just warning you because it does take a long time for me. So even with the mass install, I'll probably uh, pay attention to my time. But I think when I tried this to make sure it works for me, I think it took maybe about two and a half hours. So we're going to find that out right now. I just wanted to let you know to just be prepared, be prepared to do a lot of waiting while we're installing these cores. Unfortunately, that's all we have right now until hopefully things are fixed. But for now, let's go ahead and start installing these cores. Okay, so I did a fresh install of RetroPie and I'm still having the same issues that others are having. But I wanted to say that I'm not going to be doing a full setup guide for RetroPie on this video. Instead, I'm going to leave a link in the description to my video on the full setup guide of RetroPie. So after you're finished watching this video, you'll know what to do when you encounter the issue when watching my setup guide. But with that being said, we can go ahead and start this process of installing these cores. Okay, so as we get started, I would like to mention that I highly recommend using a keyboard and mouse to do this setup because it's a whole lot easier to navigate through all the things that we're going to be doing. Now you still could use handheld mode or your joy cons in Bluetooth as a keyboard and mouse option. But like I said, it's just a lot easier to use a keyboard and mouse physically, but it's up to you. So with that being said, I'm going to be use my mouse to navigate to the files tab here on the left and enter it. Once you enter that, you're going to see all your files and you're going to want to make sure that you're inside the tab for home. Inside this home area, you're going to have the two folders here that are created after you install RetroPie. So this folder here that's called RetroPie Setup, this is the folder that we're going to be focusing on to install our cores. So go ahead and enter this folder. Once you enter this folder, you want to make sure you have this file here that says RetroPie underscore setup dot sh. And once you locate this file, you're going to want to go to this empty space inside this RetroPie setup folder and right click and then open a terminal inside this folder. Once you do that, you can see your terminal here and make sure it says RetroPie setup. After that, you can go to your keyboard and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to type this out. You're going to type in sudo and then we're going to do space uh, period forward slash RetroPie underscore setup dot sh make sure it's spelled correctly like this or else you're going to have an error 
when you try to enter it. So go ahead and press enter after you spelled it like this. It's going to ask you for your password, I think. Maybe not. So it did not ask my password, but if it does ask for your password, just go ahead and enter it. And then you should have this uh, GUI setup of RetroPy. So, and once you're here in the RetroPy setup script, you're only going to be using your keyboard to navigate through these options. So on your keyboard, you're going to want to use up and down arrows and left and right. So left and right does OK and exit. Up and down navigates through the options. So with your keyboard, you're going to want to go to manage package and then make sure that you're on OK, then press enter. Here in the manage package, we're going to want to go to the manage optional packages and then press enter on OK. So here you're going to have all the cores that are available to install. So here it has RetroPy uh, core emulators and the ones that are in red are not supported for the switch. So you can install all the ones that are in black letters. So once you scroll through them, I would like to mention that the main ones that RetroPie uses that work on the switch are under this category here that is RetroPie Lib Retro Cores. And here we have like the PlayStation, we have Dreamcast, um, Arcade, Super Nintendo and things like that. You can scroll through all of these and install the ones that you want to use on your switch. We also have the RetroPie ports that if you want to go in there and uh, install and look through them. Uh, a lot of these things are not going to be supported uh, because if you try to install them, it's going to say that it doesn't work on the switch. So just be mindful of that, that I do know of anything that's that has this uh, LR for Lib Retro should work on the switch if they're in black letters. So let's go ahead and do an example of one of these cores. Hi, sorry for interrupting the video. I'm coming from the future and I forgot to mention something after I finished the whole video. But here where I was talking about that you have the manage optional packages inside here, there are all the optional packages that you can install. And what I forgot to mention is that if you go back, there is the main packages. So for example, when I tried to play something with the PlayStation, it was using the core called Beetle and it wasn't running very well. But I do know that it runs very well with the PC SX rearmed version. And in the optional packages, it shows that you cannot install it. Let me just show you real quick. It's right here. So it's not an option to install, but it is part of the main packages. So that's what I wanted to show you real quick. You could opt in to go into the main packages and install the packages that you might have missed. Hold on. So inside here in the main package tab, you also have cores that you can install. So I didn't have the Genesis plus GX when I tried to um, do the mass install. I did not have it. I have the master drive. So I installed that and also right here has the PC SX rearmed uh, for the PlayStation. So you can go ahead and go through here if you like uh, to install those uh, options as well. So that's all I wanted to say. So you can go ahead and continue with the video just to get set up. So we want to have, let's say the Super Nintendo core. You can install any one of these that are in black. And I'm going to do this 2010 version. You can go ahead and click on OK. And this is going to be just a manual install for just one. After we do this one, then we can look at the option for the mass install. But I just want to show you that you can install just one at a time. That way you don't have to do a longer wait. So let's go ahead. And once you're here in the core that you want, you can go ahead and click on install from source. Make sure you have an internet connection and then use your keyboard to navigate to yes and then press enter. So now with your internet connection, it's going to go ahead and start installing and building the core for you. So this is where it might take a little long right now. It's 1222 
and then we're going to see how long it takes to install just one core. And after we're done with this core install, we're going to go ahead and go back to the ROMs folder and see if it's now inside that ROMs folder. Okay, so it just finished and it took about, what, three minutes in order to install this core. But once we're done, we can go ahead and use the keyboard to navigate to the option back. And then we can go ahead and click on back again and then back again and then click on exit. And the only reason why we're doing this is because we want to make sure that it's working. You don't want to install all these cores and then it doesn't work for you. So once you get out of the RetroPie setup, you can leave the, the, the terminal there because we're going to go back into the setup, but we can go to this folder here and then click on back then go into the RetroPie folder and then go into the ROMs folder and see if you have a new folder here. So yes, it did work once we installed the core. Now we have the folder here, but there's nothing in there because you have to locate your own uh, games, but now you can actually put them in here and then uh, open up RetroPie and do all the setup from the setup guide. But once you put your ROMs in here or your games, then you'd be able to see the core pop up in RetroPie, which I'll be showing later on. But now that we have this here, we can go ahead and go back into the terminal and I think you can just push up for the last thing that you type that we don't have to type it again. Yeah, that's correct. We just push up and then press enter. Should open the GUI or the RetroPie setup script again. And now we're back in here. So let's go ahead and just install another uh, core manually. And then we'll do the mass install because that's going to take forever. And I just want to make sure that you guys get to see the examples here. So manage packages again go to manage optional packages and then you're going to want to go look for a core so i'm going i'm doing these because they are smaller to do just to show you uh, that they're working and in this case i'm going to be doing uh, this core but of course you're going to be doing the cores that you want so with this core i'm going to do the same thing enter it and then install from source are you sure you want to install? Click on yes. It's currently 1228 and let's see how this takes. Okay, so this core was actually pretty quick. I think it was maybe a minute or less. I actually left and came back and it was already done. I, I thought it was gonna take longer, but some of these smaller ones will be quicker. Some of them will be quick. Some of them will take really long, like the PlayStation, the PSP, the uh, Dreamcast. Those are a lot bigger uh, cores, so they may take longer. So just be prepared to be doing a lot of waiting for some more than others. But once we installed this core, we can go ahead and go back into the ROMs folder from here. Instead of getting all the way out, we can check here and we do have a nest folder now. So with that, now you can go ahead and just install all the cores that you want manually. But if you want to do a mass install of all the cores, you can go ahead and click on back. And once you go all the way to the top of this uh, manage core option, you have this install all optional packages. Now, there's a problem with this option here because it's going to install everything that's in black. So you're going to get the ones that you want and you're going to get the ones that you don't want as well. Or maybe you do want them. But I'm just saying that it's going to install all of these that are in black. And I'm going to let you know, I'm going to show it later, but once you install all of them, it's going to tell you that uh, a lot of them failed. And just go ahead and click OK because all the ones that are failing, they don't work on the switch. So all the ones that do work will be installed and then you'll have a folder that looks like mine because I did the mess install. So it's up to you if you want to do single installs um, because maybe you don't want all the cores. But if you want to do a mass install, let's go ahead and just get right into it. Now, I'm going to say the time right now because uh, this one, I think, did take maybe almost two and a half hours to complete. So once you go to install all optional packages, it says, do you want to install? Are you sure? Go ahead and click on yes. And then just... Now the waiting game begins. It's 1234 right now. And I'll get back to y'all when this is done. Okay, so I'm back. And I do not know how long it took 
for the mass install to finish because I just went to bed. Uh, but with my previous attempts of making sure that th this is going to work, it did take somewhere between one hour to two and a half hours, so somewhere around there. But here I am the next day and I left my switch on so that way I can be prepared to continue this recording. So here we are. Once the mass install is done, you're going to want to use your keyboard. And you're going to look at the message. It says it could not successfully install this one, this emulator. So just go ahead and click OK. And then could not install this one, PSPP. But there is going to be a core for it. So you don't have to worry about the failed install. It's just this version of the uh, PlayStation Portable is uh, not for the Switch. But there is one for the Switch. I show it on my... Um, Retro Pi guide. So we should be good. So just click OK on all these failed ones. Failed, failed, failed. We don't need them because they don't work on the switch anyways. And once you're done, you should be able to just keep clicking OK and then it'll go back to here. So once we're in this area here, we can now go to our ROMs folder and then we can check and see if we have all of the cores installed and the core folder files. So now you should have something like this after the mass install and here you can go ahead and start adding your games. So this is the part where people were having issues and I wanted to address this issue because I don't know why the script is not working and uh, when you do a fresh install, the cores are not already installed for you. So I hope this video helps for you. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some some games to these folders just so that way I can show you that it works but we're pretty much done here if you're interested in the full setup guide of RetroPie you can go ahead and move to that video now if you like in a, with the link in the description but for here I'm just going to add some uh, games and then I'm going to run RetroPie so I can show you that it's working on my end okay so I added the games that I wanted to try in RetroPie so once you put those specific games in those core folders RetroPie should pick them up and once you open it up, you should have those core folders pop up here on RetroPie. So for example, I added several games in the arcade folder in the ROMs folder in RetroPie and RetroPie picked them up and now I have an arcade section here where I can access my um, games that I put on this folder. Same thing goes for Dreamcast. I ended up adding this uh, Marvel vs. Capcom and there it's already in here for me too. So. That's pretty much it. Once you have those games in those folders, everything's working just fine. So that means that we uh, were successful with installing the cores and those core folders. So everything should be working just fine from here. And then, like I said, you can go ahead and look at the full set of guides. So that way, if you're interested in using RetroPie, you can follow along with that video now. So sorry that I had to make you go from video to video. I just didn't want to have um, two videos out there It's making things more confusing for people. So everything is working for me here. I hope everything is working for you as well. But of course, if it's not, you can let me know in the comments and I'll try and help you out as best as I can. Uh, you can let me know also if it does work for you. Um, I know, <laughs> let me know how long it took for you to install those cores because it took a really long time for me. But Everything's working in this sense. If there's any type of update in the future for RetroPie, then I'll most likely do an update video on this. But other than that, that's all we have for now. So again, thanks for watching and appreciate the love and support. And with that being said, <laughs> thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next one.